Welcome to InfoHub. In our headlines, more students benefit from President David Granger's 5Bs initiative in Regions 2 and 3. 120 Mazaruni prison inmates graduate from innovative skills training program. Brazil boosts local health sector and Burger King opens. Stay tuned for the details of these and more. And now for the details. President David Granger's 5Bs initiative was taken to regions 2 and 3, where one bus was given to the Queenstown Essequibo Coast and the other to Parfait Harmony, West Bank Demerara. Here is Sinica Thorne. The 30 city buses were handed over to the respective regions by Minister of Social Protection Amna Ali on Monday. The bus at Parfait Harmony was donated by Director of IAST, Dr. Suresh Narain, and Kamal Singh of Geico Construction while the one at Essequibo was donated by a prominent businessman. During the handing over ceremony at the Parfait Harmony Primary School, Minister Ali reaffirmed the government's commitment to ensuring equal access to education for all the country's children. Education is high on the agenda of our government priorities. And we are fully committed to ensuring that all children throughout Guyana have equal access to education through the President's 5Bs program, buses, boats, bicycles, books, and breakfast. Ario Region 3, Dennis Jaikran, disclosed that since the 5 Bs program was initiated in the region, school attendance has improved tremendously. We have in this region an improvement in the attendance of our children at school and a great reduction of unpunctuality. And this is a clear indication that more of this is going to happen after the commissioning of the second bus to this region. The bus at Parfait Harmony will transport students to the West Demerara and Potential Secondary School and the other in Essequibo will operate from Good Hope to Anna Regina. President Granger's 5B program continues to garner support nationwide from members of the private sector and private citizens. The government has thus far commissioned 27 buses across the country, along with nine boats and hundreds of bicycles and books. Seneca Thorne, Foreign Food Hub. Acting Director of Prisons Gladwin Samuels is encouraging inmates to use the opportunity to elevate themselves. Hear more from Tiffany Rogers. Speaking at the graduation ceremony on Monday for 120 inmates of the Sibley Hall Mazaruni prisons, Samuels encouraged the inmates to see incarceration as a second chance to be successful. We need you to see your incarceration not only as your fall, but as your opportunity to get right back up, rehabilitate, go through those gates on the completion of your sentence and realize your full potential. The prison's director challenged the graduating inmates to learn from the past and be good contributing members of society. At this Mazuni location and at other locations, the Guyana Prison Service has worked at expanding your understanding and improving your skills and helping you to expand your knowledge. With these, you can build your dreams. You can equip yourself to take your place as productive citizens when you are lawfully released from prison. The training aims to reduce the number of repeat offenders in the correctional facility. It was made possible through collaboration of several businesses and the prison service, which Samuel says will do better in the years to come. The inmates will be able to expand their areas of training and receive regional certification, enabling them to gain meaningful employment. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers.
Guyana is open for business, according to the finance minister, as Burger King gets set to start operations. Tiffany joins us again. Minister Winston Jordan described the franchise launch as a testimony of progressive Guyanese entrepreneurs' willingness to invest in the country. I'm doubly pleased that this initiative has come from this group of young Guyanese who, in spite of the odds, survived the doubts of the naysayers, put their money where their proverbial mouth is, and invested in our country's development. The minister pointed out that the government is working overtime to remove disincentives to investing in Guyana. All investors, whether local or foreign, must be treated equally and with respect. They must feel wanted, not because of their friendship with this or that minister or other high-ranking official, but because of their worth, the risk they intend to take and the addition to the wealth of the nation. Minister Jordan assured fiscal policies will always reflect the government's resolve to foster private sector growth and investment through the establishment of fair and transparent competition. Guyana is open for business. We will stand with any investor who is committed to the growth and development of this country that we call home. We will hold the hands of any citizen who is willing to work to unlock the potential that has long been bandied about. We will partner with you to weather the challenges that may arise in the quest to make Guyana a better country. Burger King is the latest fast food franchise by the Corum Group, which plans to open six outlets across the country. Burger King will be opening its doors at Regent and Camp Streets, Georgetown, to the public from Wednesday, December 20, 2017. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs Sidney Alicock reaffirmed the government's commitment to working closely with hinterland residents. Here are the details. The Vice President and Minister Alicock, accompanied by Minister of Public Affairs Don Hastings Williams, made the remarks during a visit to Chenoweng Village, Upper Mazaruni Region 7. He noted that despite the heavy task, the government is not backing down and is working for its indigenous people. And we have recognized those things. We have been planning and we have now in the ministry have employed more CDOs, more welfare officers to look after the birth certificates, to look after your general everyday work and to help the community with their development. Minister Alicog, however, noted that over the years, despite the government's investment in the community, several pieces of equipment given were badly mismanaged. Our observation is that we have seen some expensive equipment lying for the want of probably a battery, for the want of just a little part, and that is not proper management. I think things were given to you without a plan. We would like to correct that because these equipment are very expensive and it is taxpayers' money that we are getting to spend. Since taking office in 2015, the government invested heavily in Chinoweng's development. These include in a multipurpose center, an ATV, a rest house, a village office, a wooden boat, and provision of training for 15 youths through the Hinterland Employment and Youth Service, Hayes, program. In 2018, a $1.5 million fund will be provided for the community to undertake a project of their choice. Brazil has donated 10,000 units of MMR vaccines to Guyana. Delicia Haynes tells us more. The MMR vaccine is an immunization vaccine against measles, mumps, and rubella. The vaccines were handed over to the Minister of Public Health, Valdo Lawrence, by the Brazilian ambassador to Guyana earlier today. This is the second donation that Brazil is offering for the Minister of Health this year. Uh, this time is 10,000 vaccines uh, for MMR. MMR, yeah? Yes. Yeah. So it's... Uh, is a, a gesture for a, a country that's brother and friend of Brazil. And this just shows that how good the relationship between the two countries are going. Minister Lawrence remarked that the donation will help to meet the country's demands for the vaccine. To ensure that we continue to have a stockpile of vaccines 
And as I mentioned, um, we have a vaccination program in Guyana. We are catering for that through our budget and through some of our partners. So we're on track on, with that. But because of the high incidence of persons going back and forth, Brazilians, Surinamese, Venezuelans, and so on, this boost will help us to take off that excess. The Public Health Ministry's Family Health Care Program head, Dr. Ertanesia Hamilton, explained that the vaccines will be dispatched to far-flung areas in an effort to prevent the spread of measles, mumps, and rubella. We'll be targeting most regions 1, 2, 7, 8, and 9, um, looking specifically at the border areas um, because... Um, that's where most of our traffic is from persons. And also we try to immunize all of our officers who are first responders, such as port health officers, our immigration officers, our police and our soldiers. The MMR vaccine contains weakened versions of live measles, mumps and rubella viruses. The vaccine works by triggering the immune system to produce antibodies against the three viruses. For InfoHub, Delicia Haynes. Alexis Rodney now tells us that non-payment of land rent and non-beneficial occupation of public lands continue to affect the Ghana Lands and Survey Commission, something Chief Executive Officer Trevor Ben said the entity is working to address. At the GSLC's year-end press conference today, Commissioner Trevor Ben said that some 40% of leases are non-performing, depriving the agency of billions of dollars. He reminded that the commission is a semi-autonomous agency and is required to make its own money. According to him, the issue is putting a strain on the entity. When I arrived here when the new board of directors took over, we were hundreds of millions in the red, and largely due to issues of that nature. Thankfully, he said the commission began taking steps and has been able to make some headway in remedying the situation. We cannot just see it in numbers, in the, in, in the form of numbers, because this include a deficiency in equipment. We have, not re, we have not been able to replace equipment and all of that for a number of years, vehicles, re renovations to the building. We've not been able to do that for many, many years. But in terms of liquid cash, we were close to $200 million in the red. Sharing some of the highlights of 2017, the commissioner noted the entity's compilation plans for various areas such as the Great Diamond, Houston, Herstelling, Eccles and Peters Hall on the east bank of the Marara, and to digitize cadastral plans. He also highlighted efforts to improve the lease application process and lease management system with the completion of the lease revenue portfolio. Alexis Rodney for InfoHub. The mayor and city council has extended its one-month amnesty offer to defaulting taxpayers. Crystal Stull has the details. Acting Treasurer John Douglas explained the council's decision to extend its November amnesty offer to taxpayers since some individuals were unable to meet the previous deadline. We have decided to do this based on the fact that as of Friday, we, because of the number of ratepayers that was present, we had to extend our office hours. And still, some individuals call me pleading because they were still unable to meet council in time. Following the amnesty offer in November, the council has since received approximately $100 million. Additionally, in 2018, Douglas noted the council will conduct a re-evaluation of properties within Georgetown. To this end, the council is calling on citizens to make all tax payments in 2017 since it will acquire an added interest rate in the new year. What we have decided to do is to come up with a payment plan for members, for rates and taxpayers. We are saying, if you come now within the amnesty period, we would give you a 100% interest free. According to the acting treasurer, a six months down payment plan can also be negotiated for persons to pay taxes owed. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. Here's our final report from Renetta LaFleur. The Guyana Power and Light Incorporated is in the Christmas spirit and is giving back. The power company today handed over a $500,000 check to the Guyana Amateur Basketball Federation for its fourth national tournament. 
Public Relations Officer Chevron Sears said the donation is part of the company's commitment to support the drive of developing sports in Guyana. GPL recognizes our corporate social responsibility, which is to ensure that we give back to national development. In this field of sport, which is the basketball, we are honored to actually give back to the Ghana Basketball Federation. Um, we are looking forward to the games to ensure that, you know, um, we see how our young people are really propelling sport in Guyana. National Coordinator for the Guyana Amateur Basketball Federation, Junior Hercules, said the association is grateful for the donation. He said that the monies will be used to purchase trophies. What, can, what we will do with the contribution or the donation from the Guyana Power and Light, in fact, um, we have yet to be purchased. Trophies, I'm, I'm sure the president who could not be here today um, will see it fit that uh, whether it's the second place or the third place, of course, we have, we would invite a member from the Guyana Power and Light uh, to the semifinals to witness what we refer to as entertainment in addition to the basketball tournament. The tournament, which started on December 1st, is being held at the Cliff Anderson Sports Hall with 10 clubs competing. Tournament will conclude on December 24th. Renata LaFleur for InfoHub. Thanks for watching. Remember to connect with us 24-7 on our website and social media. Goodbye.